Zechariah chapter 14 verse 6 and it came to pass in that day I said mark that in that day it's that's the whole time of this of the second advent and the millennium that the light shall not be clear nor dark kind of interesting they got today rock groups and all that got that black light they're not going to have that but it shall be one day we shall be known to the Lord not day not night but it shall come to pass That the evening time it shall be light. So we're looking at a light that's quite exceptional from regular light. <clears throat> and we see a light in John chapter 1. That millennium period of day and night. With no curse. There will be a night in the millennium. But remember. The glory of God. The light of Jesus Christ. Will always be there. And it will be far more spectacular. In New Jerusalem. I was in prison one night doing a study and I gave this illustration it was great all. In New Jerusalem there's absolutely no darkness at all. No shadow. The light of God Almighty is everywhere. And someone raised their hand and said, Stiley, what do you mean everywhere? He said, would it cast shadow? I said, there's no shadow. I said, what you could do is, you won't be able to find it. If you were to get yourself a cardboard box. And put yourself in that box. Have somebody come along and seal that box and tape that box with duct tape. And then put it inside of another box and seal that box up and, and seal it. All around with duct tape, there will be light. And you say that when that one time a year, twice, when the high priest went into the room that had no light at all, the Holy of Holies, now the holy place had light, had a candlestick, but when he crossed that veil into the most holy place, and was to take that blood and put it on a particular spot. How did he know where it was? Because the Bible tells us he walked into the presence of God. In the presence of God is light. Moses, you cannot see my glory. No man can see my glory and live. And when, when, when Moses was put in the cliff with the rock and God covered him with his hand. Moses came down from that mount and his face shined. When Paul was on the road to Damascus, he saw a light that was greater than the noonday light. That's exactly what we're talking about right now. Paul is a Christian for the church. Age. He's also a type of Second Advent when he's on that road to Damascus. It shall come to pass in that day that living water and Ezekiel tells us that living water gives life to fish except the marshes where there's a gathering of salt and 
There's no light. Now see, we've got to take Zechariah with Ezekiel. We can enjoy the book of Revelation, but we also got to have the book of Genesis. We got to have 65 books for the 66th book. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just open my Bible and put my finger down. That's not what God intended. The living warrior shall go out from Jerusalem, the, the capital. And again, you find this in Ezekiel. Now, don't be confused with the river of life in New Jerusalem that comes out from the throne of God. Got to rightly divide. Half of them toward the former sea. Well, there's no sea in New Jerusalem, New Heavens and Earth. Half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and winter shall it be. So there are still seasons in the millennium. The Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, shall be king over all the earth. Revelation 19. This is Jesus Christ. We've studied it enough. Revelation 19, 16. He has on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's Jesus Christ. Now the Jehovah idiots, and they'll tell you, say, is Jesus God? No, he's not. If a Jehovah Witness tells you he, he no, or yes, I mean, you got a very young Jehovah Witness that has not been deceived yet. But the Jehovah Witness doctrine is teaching is Jesus is not God. Psalms. And I can go to a hundred places in the Bible. We'll take one tonight. Psalm 74, verse 12. And I haven't been doing this study for, for this lesson. And then I happened to be reading Psalm 74. I said, oh. Because I said to myself, when I, when I finish Zechariah, I'm going to let it stand. I'm going to let it be. It'll be too much work to go try to find the verse. So I said, that's okay. You just read your Bible like you're supposed to. I'll give you a verse. And there'll be people out there well, that don't happen to me. Do you read your Bible? No. Well, I don't read the Old Testament. I just read the Psalms. I've got the daily bread, you know, perverted Bible. you got to read your Bible every day. Psalm 74, 12. For God is my king, capital K, of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. So what does Jesus mean? Jesus means Jehovah saves. What did Paul say to the, to the prisoner, or the, 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 the guy in charge of the prison? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. What's the scripture say about you? Believe, and thou shalt be saved. Salvation. King. Capital K. God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Back to Zechariah. No way about it. And it's sorry, Zechariah 9, 14, 9.
I have so grown since I've been saved, 1987. And there are people, whether they're Christian or not Christian, when they are deceiving the people, that angers me. Whether you're deceiving a lost man or deceiving a Christian, that angers me. And I want to stop it. I can only do so much what God wants me to do. There is coming a day of judgment for the lost man and for the saved man. The great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. That God will reveal. Hey, I'm not right on everything I teach. There are some things I teach that could be a lie. I may not be right. I'm not going to tell you I'm 100% right. And I may be at, at the judgment seat of Christ, you know, that was off the wall. And it'll be, wood, hay, stuff, it will be ashes. There'll be people at either judgment, guys, that was wrong, that was. And to teach a heresy, wherein the Bible says one thing, and there's beyond a shot, I am absolutely sure that Jesus Christ is God and Jesus Christ will be king in Jerusalem forever. When, I, when a Jehovah Witness walks away from me, he's like, unless you repent and get right, you are in some big trouble. Now, whether, whether I teach something, maybe it's a fault, it's wrong, whatever it is, I misunderstood the scriptures. And then, us preachers don't preach everything right. I believe in a the gap theory, and I could be wrong. I know preachers who preach a gap theory. Maybe they're wrong. I am sure one thing. I am sure that the King James Bible is the Word of God. Any Bible from the, from the side of Antioch is the Word of God. Anything of Alexandria, you're wrong. You're, you're deceived. That's it. And I, I, I wrote today in the commentary right in Jeremiah, if I die and you find in my hands, in, in you find in my dead hands, you find a Bible of Alexandria, Westcott and Hort, Codex Indicatus, Codex Vatican. If you find one of them Bibles in my hand, it was planted by the enemy. I know a Baptist preacher. If he were to find my dead body with one of them modern but even he wouldn't believe it. You're either right with the scriptures or you're wrong. And like I said, we can go through I couldn't even do it in, in 30 minutes, 45 minutes. I had to do two or three or four lessons where Jesus says he's God. The scriptures say he is God. And there shall be one Lord today and I've watched they buried Queen Elizabeth and truly now King Charles the third is is the throne I know he's already been court or whatever, whatever. <coughs> the crown has been taken off the body of Queen Elizabeth and somehow is going to be given to her son that's a remarkable day that we have a king in England. I'm telling you right now, we are closer to the Lord Jesus Christ coming. I don't know if King, Cho king Charles III is going to work for God or work for Satan. But you have a king in England. 
And today they were singing. The Americans stole the anthem of England that they say, not, and they used to sing, God saved the Queen. But today, they noted that King Charles III could not sing what they sang because they said, God saved the King. He's the King. He can't say it. And I can pick up my King James Bible and I can give you, I think, it's four or five verses that say, God saved, not God saved the president. God saved the king. And this is extra, and I'm sorry, but I think this needs to be said. Maybe not now. I'll tell you the pride and the authenticity of America. Every official, for whatever the reason was, they had to limit how many world officials could come to the funeral today. Every official was brought in by buses. And then they rode carriages. That was it. Hey, that's the rule. That's whatever reason, that was the reason. President Biden of the United States Pride of America arrived in England in the beast, the presidential limo. And he was stopped in traffic because of the funeral procession of the Queen. He would not be bust. The pride of America coming in the beach. Meanwhile, in America, I can't say his name, the governor of Florida and the governor of Texas are taking these illegal immigrants and they're busting them to Washington, D.C., busting them a whole bunch of them to Martha's Vineyard and bust them to Chicago. And the President of the United States couldn't even say, you're not putting me on a bus. Mr. President, you and your pride and the pride of America, you put another coffin nail in the judgment by God of America. And it's funny how Donald Trump come along and all of a sudden the presidential limo is called the Beast. I think it's been 70 years since England has had a king. Philip died. I don't know what number he was. And his wife took over the crown. When King Charles, I don't care you like it or not, King Charles III is now the king of England. Hallelujah, we got a king. He is the official king. He has the right to that throne. And the president of the United States shows up. The Catholic. The Catholic. Shows up in the beast. Now, what's... I don't know, but I'm telling you. We'll move on. Now, I, I know that was extra. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I think that had to be said. There shall be one Lord and his name one. So you got 300 modern Bibles? In my Jeremiah, I know I was talking about the King James Bible, and I'm talking about the, 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 the Antioch Bible and the Alexandrian Bible. I said, there's one God, one Spirit, one Lord, one Bible. 300 Bibles. It's not Bible. I was talking to a man, and he said, what about these Bibles that are taken from an English Bible and put into other languages? I said, that's proper. If you use the Antioch line. Now, I know you got to change some words. That's exactly what the King James Bible translators did with the Italian Spanish words. 
in Africa, you can't have the word snow because they have no idea what snow is. Uh, I, I forget what it was, a coconut or kernel of corn, whatever it is. That's proper. In Spanish, you can't say toothbrush. You, you got to say brush the teeth. There's one. There's one. There's one. We in America today, we think, oh, you know, America's number one. America's number one. We're the nation. We're the great. No, there's one nation. It's called Israel. There's one God in one position of God, and it's not called democracy. I know it was the Anglican Church, and from the stuff I read, I believe possibly Queen Elizabeth is in heaven today. King Charles III, I think he needs prayer. President Biden definitely needs prayer for salvation. President Trump definitely needs prayer. Obama, the Clintons, all need prayer for salvation. The Bushes, I'm not sure. Jimmy Carter, I'm not sure. I think that's it. Of the presidents that are alive, I pray for them. But you got to understand there is one. God is one. We say Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, Jesus is the life. I got an NIV. Well, I got an RSV. I got a PDQ. I got a you stinky doo doo. All the land shall be turned as a plain. That's a flat land from Geba to Rimen, south of Jerusalem. In the second advent, at the, at the seventh year of the tribulation, and the tribulation itself, the second advent, you think one little ice cube that's going to fall off that's hanging by a fingernail that don't have fingernails is going to rise the ocean. <coughs> Forgive me, my throat. One ice cube is going to raise the, 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 the shorelines of the world two feet. That's a big ice cube. When Jesus Christ, at the end of all the earthquakes, and when Jesus Christ comes back in, in the second advent, all the entire world is going to change. The world's going to be a plain. There's going to be one mountain, and that's going to be Zion. It shall be lifted up, Jerusalem. Inhabited in her place. There'll be people living in Jerusalem. From Benjamin's gate, and you'll get the gates in Nehemiah, onto the place of the first gate. And I think the first gate in Nehemiah is the sheep gate, I think. Onto the corner gate, and you can follow the tower of Hanio that's all in Nehemiah. Onto the king's press, wine press. Well, that would be David and Solomon. And men shall dwell in it, the city, Jerusalem. And there shall be no more utter destruction. You know what's going to happen in, in the future? The Antichrist is going to come. He's going to destroy the Jews. Except for, except for a third of them. All the plagues and all the events of the book of Revelation, the, the, the seals, the... the Vials, the three woes, and trumpets. Do you realize what that's going to do to the world? You don't need to worry about an ice cube falling. There's more to come. But Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That's not now. Jacob's trouble's coming. There is no safety. Now the Antichrist, the first horse of the apocalypse, comes along, there's peace. But when his three buddies show up, when the angels start flying through the sky and proclaiming what God wants them to proclaim, when those beasts and scorpion tails show up, <laughs> When the dragon is kicked out of heaven forever,
and this shall be the plague. Uh -oh. Wherein the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. And we just talked about that previously. How God's going to gather all the nations early in chapter 14. And there'll be people that are fighting against Jerusalem, fighting against God. God says, okay, I got a plague for you. Now watch. By the way, you're going to see this in every nuclear movie. Any atomic movie you watch, you're going to see what we're reading right now. And they usually got that one stock footage of that house being blown away. Satan knows the Bible. Satan doesn't want you afraid of God. He wants you afraid of a nuclear war. Satan wants you to think that what we're going to read right now, the Russians are going to do it, not God. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall be consumed away in their mouth. That's a play. All right, let's go back to Revelation 19. What is this play? Well, the Bible tells us. Verse 11. I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse. He that sat upon it was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. In righteousness he does judge and make war. Second Advent. His eyes were as a flame, flame of fire. On his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. He was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and the name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed with fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, not an iron sword that you sharpen as a razor blade. It's figurative. You know what a sword is. You know what a sword does. That is what his mouth, that is what the word is. Look at his eyes in verse 12. They are fire. The words of God and the eyes of God, Jesus. Zechariah 14. Fourteen, twelve. The fiery eyes of the anger of Jesus and his mouth their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet, and their eyes shall be consumed in, the, in their holes, the eye holes, and their tongue shall be consumed in their mouth by the fire of the eyes of Jesus Christ. He ain't coming back as the Lamb of God no longer. He's coming back as the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Angry. And as Christians who are following him, the bride of Jesus, do we need to worry, Joel says, chapter 2? No, because the enemy's wiped out by the time we show up. And if we do get stabbed by a sword or a dart, whatever, ain't going to do us no problem. Turn off the TV and open your Bible. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. They shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor. <coughs> and the hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah shall fight in Jerusalem. So there's the Jews fighting with us, not against us. Where did they come from? We picked them up. You know what Joshua did with the, with the children of Israel once they entered across that Jordan? They fought. Who did they fight? They fought a city named Jericho. What happened in Jericho? There was a woman that put a red thread, rope, whatever, on her window. And the entire city, they marched around seven times, seven days. And they blew the trumpets. 
and the city fell flat. They went and got that woman and her family. She became part of Jerusalem. She became part of the children of Israel. She is found in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And she was a whore. She was a harlot. You know how Judah acted in the time of Jeremiah? The wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. This is the spoiling. They're going to go pick the pockets of the dead men. This is what they did in World War II. This is what they did in Korea. This is what they did in Vietnam. This is what they did in World War I. And when the dead man, oh, hey, that's a nice gun. That's a nice sword. That's, that's a nice ring you're wearing. Then you turn your television set today, and you watch these pawn stories and all that. Oh, you know, my, my grandpa got this when he was over in the war. I have no need for it. That's spoiled. Gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Well, that's a nice coat you're wearing. Mine now. So shall be the plague. What's the plague? The eyes burning up. The tongue burning up. They're burning up. Of the horse. That's a military animal. Of a mule. They're going to be on mules. Of the camel. They're going to be on camels. That, there's your Arabians. And he asked, what's the Bible tell you? The Bible just told you what that army is going to come against Jerusalem. He just told you what. They're going to be on horses, mules, camels, and asses. And all the beasts shall be, and what's that? The, the cattle for milk and meat. The calves for beef, the sheep for clothing and meat, the goats for clothing and milk. Didn't you read in the Old Testament when the battles they brought all these animals along? Well, you, you thought they had freezers? I bet you it was nothing more to that soldier. When the cook went out and grabbed one of the, the, the living beasts, killed that living beast, and freshly chopped that thing up for the meat for the soldiers. I think there's nothing better than have fresh meat. Not meat that's been chemicalized. All the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. You are looking at the second advent. You are looking at the millennium. Again, the Jehovah Witnesses say, well, we're not supposed to fight. We're not supposed to join the army. Well, what did you just read here? You got the Israelis and the church together with our commander-in-chief, Jesus, fighting the heathen. Well, not much of a fight, but we're in battle. Whoever came up with the with the rule or the regulation that Jehovah went, this you know we, we can't do military. You're just a coward. And you sat back. Oh, how can I get out of the military? I don't want to fight or anything like that. Oh, I'll make it to, as a Jehovah Witness. We don't go to war. That's simple. As a group of people, if you don't want to go to war, you don't want to defend any nation, I think you should lose your right to be inhabitant of that nation. You lose everything to do. You don't want to fight? You don't want to go to battle? Okay, fine. You'll be marked as a coward unless you're physically and medically unable. 
or you were needed. I mean, my my dad was, was refrained from the draft of World War Two because he was working on submarines during World War Two. They needed submarines. They needed so he was refrained from the draft. Jehovah Witnesses. Well, you know our Bible doctrine. Or, well, excuse me, I said, but our our Watchtower doctrine says we don't go to war. It's you know Jesus said, "Thou shalt not kill." What do you think Jesus is doing in Zechariah fourteen and Jeremiah nineteen? What do you think he's doing? Somebody is a liar. Well, Jesus is not God. We just read he was. In Zechariah 14. 